In this video I'm going to take a look at uh, eased detail in temper frame construction. So to start with I'm just going to look back over what we've done so far. We've done the sill detail and uh, we've brought it up to first floor level in, in previous videos. And at this stage now we're going to move on up onto the next level which could be at uh, just at first floor level. but. Um, and we're not going to bother with the window or I'm not, I'm not going to bother with the window in this drawing and I'm just going to draw that detail up there where you see the fascia and soffit. In this uh, picture here it shows a nice uh, three-dimensional view of the wall and uh, the timber frame stud and uh, truss roof and uh, you've got your header and uh, binder at the top of the stud here and you've got the support for the fascia and soffit here as well and your vent can be seen fairly clearly in that there. So a nice detail shown what we are going to have a look at and uh, there's the sketch in the workbook you can see there's no service cavity in this here that shows the wall your cavity closer your ties and uh, colors well used here you can see it's slightly different at the bottom of the rafter as well too it's cut vertically there's just a plum cut there's no seat cut on it this is uh, the red piece is the ease ventilator allowing air to circulate up past the insulation so when it's pushed out it uh, doesn't block there air getting in there and you see your felt and your tiles we don't have much of a lap over the tiles there to prevent water from coming back into the second line of defense of the felt so i'm going to change a few of these wee things that you're hearing it and hopefully uh, explain them so that you'll be fit to draw them so to start off with what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw just the stud and uh, the USB board and breather membrane. I'm going to draw that to a height of 85 millimeters and the scale of 1 is to 10. I draw my header and binder at the very top of the stud and then I'm going to draw the block wall which is on the outside with the 50 cavity and then I'm going to use 30 degrees for the pitch of the roof whatever they tell you in the exam to use that's what I would go with and wherever I measure out from the external of the block wall with the plaster on it I'd measure out 300 millimeters which uh, an, an hour scale of 1 is to 10 is 30 to get a one third line you can see where my seat and plumb cut are there the horizontal and vertical cut at the end of the rafter to get those particular points is one third on the rafter projected down and uh, that takes us to the next stage then of drawing in the support, the fascia and the soffit and you can see the rectangular piece there is a nail plate nail plate really is just guessed it's just not right out tight to the sides and get back in a little bit of a space uh, I'm just going to colour in the, the insulation starting off with to highlight uh, kind of areas that we have here. You can see the cavity closure is 100 millimetres, 10 millimetres, and there's my ease vent. So long as it goes past the insulation, uh, it doesn't really matter a whole pile how long that is. And uh, you can see there that I've kind of indicated from the squeezing of the detail of the insulation as well too should kind of make it fairly obvious if you put it in two layers 150 in between the joists and then 150 going along it and uh, I'm drawing in a gutter here I used 100 millimeters don't put it up tight to the edge of it in the workbook it's um, it looks like if there was a heavy spill of rain it would shoot over the top of it I've drawn in the felt here with the blue line and uh, you can see that the felt comes along the tilt and fill it and just down into the gutter it doesn't lie in the gutter some people will put uh, a sheet of DPC along that there and my rafters here or sorry my battens for the tiles there's many different types of tiles I've picked a 400 tile uh, by 300 and it's got a head hook on it and uh, it's head nailed as well to into the, uh, the battens you can see I'm using the compass to make sure that each of my tiles are the 40 long or 400 long uh, so the first batten is 300 millimeters from the edge of the soffit up and then every one of them is 25 millimeters past each of those and you can see I put in the X's and I've used the lines parallel to the rafter in order to make sure all the battens are the same size and using the two set squares to ensure that all my uh, tiles are lying nicely on top of each other the gauge should be the same the whole way up so how much of the tile is exposed and the lap depending on the area of exposure that you're living in uh, us in Donegal would get an awful lot more wind and rain so the lap I would be saying suggesting is about 100 millimeters so somewhere between 75 and 100 millimeters uh, and this year for our purposes we seldom have to calculate the actual gauge based on the length of the rafter 
So it's just handy for us to be able to run with uh, the same dimensions each time. So I'd say measure your 30 to the first bat and 300 and then uh, 250 for every one of them after that there and you can't really go terribly far wrong. In the workbook there was no surface cavity drawn. You can see I've drawn in my surface cavity here a 60mm surface cavity and fully insulated. So uh, the head and binder at the top really don't present uh, a cold bridge either. And uh, the 300mm insulation minimum which should give us a U value of 0 0.16 and then in the wall hopefully somewhere close to that as well too somewhere between the 0 0.21 and 0 0.16 other than that all the details are being sketched in here now so I should be able to pause and look at those <laughs> 